Hello and welcome to another breakdown. Um, today we'll be breaking a film as opposed to a music video. Um, last episode we put out the request for people to submit their images for a chance to win a camera rent in the Lagos area, but sadly we didn't get any from the Lagos area. So we encourage you to participate in our challenges and be able to make good use of most of the good tips that we share in the videos. So for today we'll be breaking down um, a film called Shapa. It's, uh, it's on Apple TV, um, it's a crime drama thriller and um, without diving into much we'll just start gradually and we'll break down certain scenes that are in the film and we can see what we can learn from it. So first of all, Shapa was released on February 7th, it's an hour 56 minutes long um, by the director um, Benjamin Caron. I'm sure you must be familiar with his work because um, he's known for um, Andor. It, which is a TV series, also Sherlock Holmes, that's the TV series and the Crown TV series, so he works in television. Cinematographer's name is Charlotte Bross, and we know her work from, I've seen Girl on the Train, I could remember that, um, The Girl on the Train, Fences, and A Quiet Place. The film was shot on Panavision, Panaflex, lightweight film cameras that, that are like super fast with um, um, Panavision C series and E series, which are like the lenses which they used um, on the film and also they also use the Panoflex Millennium XL2 and also using the same C series and, and E series and they predominantly shot on Kodak so we'll just dive into some scenes if you have not watched it um, there's a whole loads of spoilers that I'll be like dropping about the film so you better pause this video and go and watch it before I start spoiling the film for you that being said all spoilers disclaimers now let's move into the film so I'll play the opening scene from the movie. Uh, this is where the guy is like closing down the shop and the girl comes back because they had like an earlier exchange of she wanted to rent a library book and she didn't have cash and he gave her the book and now she came back with the cash to give him the book and he's like, okay, he's okay. Not now, not today because he was hoping to score a date on the second entry but she gave him the cash nonetheless. So if you look at the BTS, right, you can see due to the nature it was shot on film, right? A lot of it was shot on the dolly. You can see they're using like a three feet offset. Um, I would I would try and show that in the frame. You can see that that's like an offset there which the DP is holding to like give an extension away from the camera while the base is somewhere um, here where this guy is blocking. And we have our boom guy. And if we continue, um, if we, come t if we continue throughout the frame, you can see the time of day here. It's more looking like a 4 o'clock, 4.30 where the sun has just gone behind the high rises on the street. So you have like skylight on which makes it a lot more soft and a lot more pleasing quality of light. Um, as opposed to, and let if we go back into the film, like where the conversation exchange happens here. So you can now see how um, the, the lack of light coming from the store creates like negative feel, right? And we have all of the skylight that's coming in here and actually keying them from the face. And if you look at the reverse, this time I believe the sky has gone way down. And the reason why I would say that, because if you look at the background now, you can see how that building is a lot more darker. Although this could have been done in post, you get, or, um, or it could have been done um, in the grade. But it feels like if you look at here, the light that's coming in from, um, say here, it's looking more as, like a source, like a unit that's set up on a big, large bounce that's pushing through a diffusion or something to be able to open up this area and probably like a skip bounce for this reverse as opposed to, um, if we go back earlier in the frame and you look at, let's see, the ambience here also is way different than when we get to um, this part of the coverage yeah so I guess by the time they start shooting this part of the coverage they've lost more light or or they close down or the colorist decided to close down on the gaps if we turn on false color to look at it you can see they literally went bold on the film allowing it to like drop into the shadows you can see the skin's barely underexposed which is where um, black skin tones to, should exist though, which is like half stop on the exposed from the from neutral gray. You have the star has like a negative feel and the skylight becomes like the ski and he's like on the exposed too. So yeah, there's all of that that's going on for the entire film, giving making it fall into deep shadows, just soft wrap 
from the sky. We cut to the wide shot where we see them walk away um, and they lead, which is also you can find in the BTS when you get to see them walk away here. Um, if you look at the entire kit, that's like the film camera, the Panavision with the film magazine that's actually here. Um, this looks like a small HD monitor and that's like a Teradac that's on set with a um, cine tape MDR box. I, I don't know which of them is this, but I'm guessing it's, I think in another shot I saw a clear show where they were using a range finder too that helps the focus pull up, pull focus. And if you look closely, even at that, they had Max on the floor. Like they had Max on the floor that guaranteed that um, they do not miss their focus and things were as they should be and nothing was left to chance. Here's a telltale sign that we know things are shot on film. If you look at the um, the shot here, if I pause it here and we zoom in, right? You see these lines that you're seeing here? Um, let, me, let me see if I can use arrows to show you. You see these lines that you can see here, right? All of them, you see all these lines that's at the edges of the actors? Yes, those are what we call halation. Film gets like produced them based on um, um, how light goes into the emotion and scatters and reflects back and all that photochemical reaction that actually leads to all of this bleeding edge that happens that gives this red glow around the subject. And if you turn on false color, you see that's just literally silhouette, like it falls literally into the darkness. So you can see between them, there's about eight stops of exposure in this scene, in the entire dynamic range of the scene, like from the window to the darkest area, which is like the floor, there's like eight stops of, of um, dynamic range data that that film can capture. You can recover a lot from those highlights. You, you usually, it's very difficult to clip on film because the highlights, even when they clip, they roll off beautifully. Here to balance out the window, there's like a source coming in here that's actually raising the level of the face so they can, because this is a real location. There's some other locations that felt like it was done in the studio, but this is a real location. So there's um, that, that's the source, and we get to see that in the BTS. Yeah, so this is the BTS. We can see they're like on a dolly with a remote head that's actually um, holding. Um, so they are not using like tracks on this one in a way because it almost looks like it has like a Z axis because of this um, thing here, almost looking like the whole DJI Z axis contraption but like a bigger version that holds a film camera and you have like your number three axis gimbal here that's actually working and that's like a dolly grip that controls it he has his own small monitor so that he could actually see the frame and when he walks on this uneven floors the three axis stabilization takes away all the unevenness that happens um around the footage and here's the range right now sterling off yeah that connects to the Cine tape, which was on the camera, which I showed you on the on the other shot. Yeah, it was here. Yes, this is it. The cine tape was here. So this is the range finder. What it does is reads the focus distance of what's in front of the camera and allows the focus puller to be able to get accurate distance measurement because it's film. It's more critical because it's not like digital where you can go and check and see live feed you get. So just, just like a video tap where they get out of the camera to be able to see um, an approximation of what's going on. So it's really, really critical for them to be able to nail in their, their focus. And they don't get to play like us where we do put our lens on the 1.5 or, or a 1.2 or an f1.2 and say, okay, allow autofocus take control of that because that shallow depth of field will be too shallow for um, film. They usually make sure that a 2.8 or, uh, or even a 4, depending on the scenario. When they're looking this way, now they're looking into the shadows. Um, that could be like a bounce light because it's not as intense as it was when they were looking out the window. You guys, because when they were looking at the windows, it was very intense so that they can hold those sky highlights at the time of day that they were shooting because it's, it's looking like that's like the direct sun. You, get, you can see it on the floor. And to compete with that, they would need to be able to bring in some real serious firepower. I, I will not be surprised even that's an M40 that they bring in to be able to hold against the window. This is where they just came from a fundraiser and he's head over heels for her and um, they go up to their mansion and why they go up to their mansion and he's walk into a con whereby this guy is not like a real cop. He's not like a real cop and it's like the son 
they're all faking like some drug abuse and stuff like that if you look at this frame something that's interesting if you check the false color levels same thing is still going on for the footage so if you check the false color on on it you can see like over the caucasian skin tone is like one stop on the exposed and everything is just playing on that very undertone whereby it gets not too murky not too greasy it actually takes a professional to do that because you can see how they can like edge light them from their surroundings and you can there's like some kind of rigged up light up there that's like actually creating this accent which um i believe this structure here it's preventing it from hitting her but there's another light source that's coming um that's coming this way if you actually see like a tungsten source that's actually keying him and that's how it presently is in the scene um, there's a different set of where we can see like now she has like a soft key here um, that's actually um, let me see if I can um, elaborate on that a bit so she has like a, a 5600 like some kind of daylight source coming in and there's also like some um, tungsten practical source that's probably backlighting her head um for this scene though and it goes in and they have this conversation for a while she tells him she's disappointed and he's a fake cop he shouldn't give him any money and this is what his son's um his son does like he's a 419 um sorry he's a scammer <laughs> there's no such 419 is a nigerian thing it's not a global thing so he's a scammer okay so if we go to like the behind the scene you, we get to see it properly now that's the source we're talking about that was like creating like the whole daylight pool in fact even two of them there's like one coming in that's hitting this guy there's this that's coming in that's actually hitting the guy we have our orange our tungsten sauce that's actually creating um the mixed color temperature whatever stock they're shooting they actually um, try to balance it out properly so that it actually um, gives this whole richness to the entire stock yes there's a lot of that and here's that same place again before they walked in now you can see this is the um, source 4 I believe it's a source 4 yeah it, it actually looks like a source 4 that actually um, bringing the whole tungsten light and remember that we had like daylight coming in from um this other corner to why they were standing there and these are like their marks on the floor you get where and who goes what for the entire focus pulling and that's like a pole cat that is holding the source four which will become the latest backlight like we saw in the previous shot where she was backlit by by it this is it where she's backlit by it and that's where the light is that's doing that whole trick for her and yes we have like the sky panel which um i believe this goes in through some diffusion i'm not sure they left this on like this uh, and you can see how bright the room is as opposed to how dark the film is like if you're supposed to compare just for fun sake and you turn on false color you get to see like they're like two stops over exposed and to show how um how film is quite a, a different beast than digital you get and you really 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 have to pay attention and and respect the process because um some people err on the side of overshooting by exposing overexposing by two stops to be able to get a ticker negative and what that means is that you're able to get more light into the shadow area so it's now it's less noisy and clean from the way it's it's been shot it almost felt like they had a thick a thick negative and what they did was to not add the grain and the texture in post because given the levels that we're seeing from this behind the scenes it's really quite something you get yeah so now it comes back to what i was saying again like i'm not sure like they exposed overexposed that um they left that sky panel bare you can see here they have like a, a net that's in red i think it, it cuts down light by a stop and there's also like a diffusion behind if that's like a full-blown 216 or a full grade diffusion that means it's almost like three stops of light gone just to be able to soften the direct source of the panel and remember like the sky panel itself it's not even a hard source to begin with you get because it has like this diffusion around it so this is somewhere in the film where she's um, rethinking the actions for taking 300 something k from him and seeing that they've taken his father's inheritance and she reassembles the squad to go steal back the money you get just quick shot so if we look at the behind the scene here we have we're back to like um, our, um 
I believe it's like an O'Connor head or something. Yeah, and that's like the film camera, and we can see this is the cine tape, and that's like the range finder, that's like a small HD monitor, the tarot deck that's sending signal to the video village, and they'll have like a bunch of receivers. I believe the director was even using an iPad to be able to um, watch what's it, and that's our dolly grip. As you can see from here, um, the light seems to be coming from the side of the frame when they and this is the shot and you can see like that's like the light levels and I believe um, Yes, all this are just like practicals within the set and this seems like that skin him is what's spilling onto um, This chair is probably a large source as we would um, get to see and In the reverse you can see yeah here we go again. That's like the large source there with our cinematographer she's had a long day it's quite stressful and yeah now you're shooting the reverse of the shot whereby they see into the um see into the exterior and that's like um day and depending on the lens i believe that was like a close-up in the film i believe the angle didn't make it in because um from the bts that's supposed to be like we should be seeing the back of the room but we are not seeing the back of the room here we're just seeing it as like light is coming in from this side and it's actually creating this soft wrap that goes into the darkness i believe there should be some probably some bounce board that is actually complementing to raise the shadows you get or else the shadows will just fall jet black into it if you check if you check for it yeah i believe there's, there's something raising the shadows up if not it should just fall into darkness or there's like a bounce up in the air that's actually making it that way. Now this scene is interesting because this scene was actually shot at a real location and the reason why I believe that is because um, first of all what happens in the scene he tries to get him into the office from the other scene where he was walking on the hallway. This time he says it's a nuisance to his mom, how much will it take for him to be gone. You get, and if you just see differently you can see like they're able to hold the sky levels they're able to hold everything that's going on while also have like a decent key on him and you can see like and if you look at the direction of the light even when you're looking at this side of the shot you get to see in the bts why it makes sense that i believe that's a real location that's like some serious firepower they shot into something and now diffuse it like a 216 here i just like another diffusion here for him when they're doing the reverse this is the one that's actually gonna like key him and they have like negative here to be able to get like contrast on him so he doesn't like fly out over everywhere and he has like his own division when they actually shouldn't the reverse and shooting on him the entire camera language emotion language of the film was shot on a dolly like it's it's either dolly or steady cam because it has a stableness it has this pristineness that actually goes with it that you can almost tell how it was meticulously planned out it's not left to chance there's no handheld camera work there's no any of those raz energy that exists in the entire film everything is just meticulous and smooth and even you get that shows the character state of mind and kudos to the entire cinematography team and kudos to her for coming up with that brilliant camera language to be able to showcase um, um, the character's emotions you get that became the camera emotion for the film now this thing is interesting because this one i do not believe um it's a riser it feels more like a set and i would show you why in the future so they had like breakfast in the morning and she has like um talking about her son and and like prepping him and stuff and here you can see like this is set as sun rays here we can see the light directions going this way but somehow there's another light coming in and kissing him you get if it was a real location i don't know how tall up in the air this would be but i almost feel this may be really expensive to achieve this kind of shot where you have like this edge in him and also having maintaining light continuity so yeah we continue he meets them in breakfast and she's like oh well, let's have dinner or something together and she's giving me her time and stuff like that and she leaves both grown-up men very soon and gets out of the house and he sits in and they both and he issues a soft threat to him like they should be friends and he's like oh okay but that didn't sound all friendly but this is interesting though because in this shot here um where she was i believe where she was here i believe the lighting was quite different based on how it shapes um, his eyes due to the camera if we go forward into the shot again and look at that same lighting you can see it's somewhat more 
rappy and soft as opposed to uh, when we first see it here you get this is a different setup but for this setup we do have for this setup we do have the bts the behind the scene um if we look at it it's um a sandwich bounce i believe a it, it feels like a sky panel i can't really see clearly but a soft sauce that's blo that's bouncing into like an ultra bounce and they have like this four by eight that they constructed with this frame to give this whole scenario here and that's what he sits into that lights him properly yes that's the director with his ipad here that's receiving the um, whole signal and that's like our dolly grip um he comes in takes a drink sees his mom sees the party everybody's bougie now this is why i call this fake because that doesn't look like the sun and we continue for a bit he introduces them and you can see how low the levels are compared to what it really is on the day so yeah it's it's almost like they did overexpose it to get like clean up it pushed it down during the grade because it's really 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 still under that one stop on the exposure one stop on the exposure two stop on the exposure one and a half stop to be fair from um the entire film if you look at the behind the scenes now you get to see what i mean like that's not the sun i guess i was painted out with vfx you can see the edge of the band of whatever that light is and that's what that is and if we continue um let's see yeah we get to see you get the light now that same light here and up top here we have those soft boxes you can see them clearly in the mirror right they're like all there in the mirror and there's something that looks like a pole cat that's holding them there and um, it continues in the room where we have like our far side key and we have like negative to be able to do um, to create contrast that happens throughout the entire scene here you can clearly see what um, we're talking about and it feels like on today's version of the set the director was like an extra like he acted as part of the guest and that would be cool though so that's like from the movie Sharper, and i hope you found that useful as uh, we broke down using real elements we could find from the behind the scenes to be able to explain some of the stuff of how they broke um, down the film and what they did with the film and um, i hope this has been beneficial to you in some way and we'll try to break down more films and learn from them and actually take more things from them if you have any questions if you have any suggestions if this video has been useful to you please like subscribe and share if you want more videos like this you could hit the thumbs up and encourage and you can encourage us by um, um, using any of those um, stickers to be able to help us to make more dedicated time and create more quality content for you and um, yeah, we'll see you next time in the next video where that we will break down more videos and see how they can be beneficial to you and I. So until next time I see you, improvise, adapt, and overcome.